Well, Bernie, I think the last time that uh, we had you in the show, it was a year and a half, two years ago in Miami Beach, and we were talking about the uh, Mercedes-Benz Swimsuit uh, Fashion Week. Yes, so, yeah, what a change. <laughs> a lot of things have changed since then, huh? Absolutely, yeah. Well, you know what? A year and a half ago, we created the dedicated van division <clears throat> to look after all the commercial business in the United States. And I took over that uh, van division as the VP uh, and managing director of vans in the United States. Yeah, so a year and a half, and a lot has happened since then. I mean, the Sprinter has been in the market since uh, 2001, I believe, in the U.S., uh, but in the past few months almost like everything has like moved a lot faster and faster right yeah I'll take that as a, a, a nice compliment thank you very no, much no. Yeah, you know yeah sprinters in the US since 2001 but as Mercedes-Benz sprinter only since 2010 so yeah. we started selling the sprinter under the brand Mercedes-Benz in 2010 and ever since we set in one sales record after the other it's actually the fifth, the fifth sales record in a row and last year we sold almost 26,000 sprinters in the United States yeah and it's a very interesting product. I mean, uh, it has it take has the Mercedes Benz name and badge and everything, and the image. But it's like a completely different product for the passenger cars. But something that is very very successful for Mercedes or for the Daimler Group around the world, right? Yes, you know the van division is a very successful and very profitable division for Mercedes Benz. Obviously, it's a smaller division compared yeah. to the truck division, heavy duty trucks, or to the passenger car division. <clears throat> but in the United States, it's a very lucrative business, and we see a lot of growth potential still in the van business. Especially if you look what we're doing now. So Sprinter is our full-size van, but this year we have exciting news. We launch a new mid-size van to the United States. We call it the Mercedes-Benz Metris. Yeah, uh, very. I mean, I, I had the pleasure to drive it yesterday for, uh, here in uh, we're in Colorado from uh, Durango, Colorado, to this fabulous spot that you picked to to introduce the car to us, and, and it's very interesting. I mean, it's like it's not very big, but I mean from outside. But once you get inside, there's a lot of room. You have the passenger version, the the cargo version, yeah. and it really drives like a car. It absolutely handles very very much like a car. It's very agile, very nimble to drive. You know, we just say it's the right size van at the right price for the right customer. So what are we talking about, price for, for, for the so the, vehicles? So the Mercedes-Benz Metro starts as a cargo van at 28950 And if you choose to have the passenger van, which sits actually up to eight people, it's 32500 that's very interesting because it, and, uh, even though it doesn't have, like, let's say, all the luxury uh, that a regular Mercedes-Benz car, but it has a lot of that technology, safety technology, the driving technology, the yeah. powertrain, for yeah. example, that engine is fantastic. Yeah, we have the same engine in our um, uh, Metros, like you know it from the CLA, the Mercedes-Benz CLA. Yeah. It's the four-cylinder turbo-driven M274, has 208 horsepower. We have the same transmission, the seven-speed transmission in there. And we share a lot of technology, which you know we're benefiting from the passenger car division. We have a tension assist standard in the car. We have the crosswind assist standard in our Metros. And we are able to offer also lane departure warning and a lot of other sophisticated uh, technologies from the passenger car division. And that car, there's nothing like it really in the market because, I mean, the minivans, I mean, are, are like more or less the same concept, but this is completely different, almost a different size. It's a little bit smaller, but like very capable too, right? Yeah, it's, it's actually, we call it, it's the, the next big thing it here is here and it's midsize. <laughs> so <laughs> if you look at, one. yeah, if you look at the midsize uh, market in the United States on the van side, there's only one competitor out there and they are discontinuing it. So you have a bunch of small vans out there. Um, but uh, the, the mattress is significantly larger and offers way more payload and cargo capacity than the small ones. And the big thing with the mattress is it's, it's still small enough to fit in every garage. So you can park it overnight in your garage at home. Yeah. Um, and this car, um, you're expecting to sell it 50-50 cargo and passenger. But, I mean, my first impression, as um, a lot of my friends, my soccer team, uh, former teammates, I don't play anymore, I have to retire, but that's another story, not important to this. But a lot of people who like, for example, do those kind of activities over the weekends, I think are going to love it, because it has like <coughs> all, up to eight people, you can have still a lot of cargo mm -hmm. space, and it's very practical, small engine, so great fuel efficiency and all that. 
Yeah, so I agree. I mean, we, we went actually out there and we thought we were actually ambitious with the 50-50 split between cargo yeah. and passenger. Because when we looked at what does Sprinter do, Sprinter is mostly cargo. And we only have 70% cargo and maybe 15% passenger. So we thought there's more potential on the, on the metros with passenger and we went 50-50. You know, if we're wrong and it's even heavier on, on, on the passengers, so be it. Uh, the, the factory, which is in Spain, in Vitoria, yeah. is pretty flexible and we can adjust accordingly. Speaking of... Of, uh, origin of production. Uh, they're very interesting stories uh, within the Sprinter and, and this one, the, the Metris. But the Sprinter, it's currently built, the ones that we get in the US are built in Germany. But can you tell us what happens to them before they yes. get here? Yes. <laughs> so it all goes back to a tax which is called the chicken tax, and that's from the 50s. Uh, and it's a tax, it's 25% uh, tax on any cargo van imported into the United States from Europe. Okay. So that means any Sprinter cargo van <clears throat> has to be assembled first in Dusseldorf. Then we ship it to the port in Rotterdam. We disassemble the Sprinter <laughs> again. <clears throat> we put the, the chassis and the drivetrain and the engine in two separate boxes. We load the two separate boxes on two separate cargo vessels. They both ship across the ocean. Then we match these two boxes together again in our factory in Ladson in Charleston, South Carolina. And then we reassemble <laughs> the original Sprinter, which was built in Düsseldorf, back here in the United States. Nothing like, not, no. not, not at all German efficiency. Right there, huh? That is not the most logistic, that's a logistical nightmare, as you can imagine. But it's, it's the only way to, to allow us to bring these Sprinters in and avoid the 25% tax. But you have a, a solution for that pretty soon coming up, right? We have exciting news. Uh, aside from the metros coming this year, we had just had a big announcement. Mercedes will... Uh, <clears throat> increase our footprint here in the United States and we will we will build a brand new factory in South Carolina and it's a 500 million investment for, from Daimler into the United States and we will build Sprinters in the United States and that's body and white, it's a whole paint shop, it's, an, it's a real production of Sprinters for the United States in the United States. So creating more jobs and more uh, vehicles, <clears throat> Mercedes-Benz vehicles here in the States because already the plant in um, Tuscaloosa, in that, yeah. it's pretty big. I mean, they're producing all the SUVs and the C-Class yes. for the first time now, right? Yes, that's, uh, we have a, re a really put a big footprint already in Alabama on the passenger car side. And we're really excited to do the same now on the van side and build our Sprinter here. So so vans are not just born to run, they're now born in the USA. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty good. Good, good one, good lines there. So um, when is the Metris coming? I mean, the, the, the yeah. Sprinter is already here. The 4x4 debuted this year. It's doing really well, I understand, on sales. <clears throat> the Sprinter 4x4 was just launched in February of this year, and we're, we're sold out for the next six months. Wow. Until That's the end of the year, it's have. sold out, yes. <clears throat> so we're hoping to get more allocation from Stuttgart. It's, it's, the demand has been, is really high. You know, there's demand not just from shuttle services. You can think of winter resource, upscale yeah. winter resource who want a 4x4 Sprinter. But also think of RV manufacturers. They want a yeah. 4x4 chassis or 4x4 Sprinter and, and make an RV yeah, out of it. It brings there. a whole new dimension to the whole vehicle. new customer base to it. So that's the 4x4. And then the Metrisk is coming October 1. So we launched with the midsize van October of this year. Well, excellent. And uh, again, like really good job, obviously, in the past uh, year and a half since you moved there. But maybe you. you can come back sometime to Miami and we go to the fashion show again. Yeah, no, maybe, maybe I bring a Sprinter. Bring a Sprinter. Bring a Sprinter. Yeah, that's an idea. That's an idea. We're going to do a Sprinter and make some models? fashion model out How of it. How many models can we fit uh, in? 12. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's a good number. I there like that. There you go. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Bernie. And thank you for having us here at this beautiful place in Colorado. Uh, please go and visit our website and uh, we want to share all the videos and all that. So Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Great to you and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.